Welcome to Second Recapped. At the beginning of the movie, a long time ago in ancient Japan, a boy named Kai, who was said to have been raised by demons, left the forest, and was eventually discovered by Lord Asano. The guy decided to adopt him because he saw great potential in the youngster, and the Lord allowed him to live among the samurais even though it was a great taboo. Kai became closer to the Lord's daughter Mika, and they finally fell in love, but they kept their feelings hidden. Soon, the boy matures into a skilled man who joins his lord on hunting adventures. He advises the lord's right-hand man, Oishi, to remain and catch their prey since he detected something wrong with it, but the samurai refuses to listen to someone of such low rank and orders the men to proceed. Suddenly, a massive beast charges toward the group, knocking the lord to the ground. When Oishi notices this, he tells everyone to immediately kill the creature. The creature proceeds on a rampage, destroying everything in its path, while the scouts close in on it. The warriors use arrows to assault the beast and try to encircle it, but nothing seems to work as the monster begins tossing the samurais around like ragdolls, sending them flying from their horses. After wreaking havoc on the party, the creatures attempt to flee into the forest, but a samurai called Yasuno pursues them, while Kai follows closely behind. The samurai attempts to fight the creature with his sword but is knocked from his horse. When the enormous creature turns back and sees the attacker on the ground, he charges at him in rage. Kai notices this and dashes towards the sword. Kai takes out the blade from the creature and offers it back to the samurai, but Yasuno is offended by the act, being saved by a half-breed who has no rank. Lord Asano arrives and sees the creature defeated, thinking that it was the samurai who slayed the beast. He gives Yasuno the honor of being his champion in the upcoming tournament, and cheers in the name of their country, believing that fortune is on their side. As the men begin to leave, Oishi notices that Kai's hands are full of blood, suggesting that he's the true slayer of the beast. Kai also detects something odd when he sees a white fox with varied eye colors and suspects that the attack was planned by a higher power. The man's suspicions are true, as the fox begins to morph back into a witch named Mizuki, who informs her lord Kira that Asano is still alive. Meanwhile, Lady Mika has matured into a stunning woman, and she rushes to the returning group after learning of the hunting expedition's injuries. After realizing that her father is well, the woman immediately inquires about the injured men, but Asano understands that his daughter is only concerned with Kai's well-being. The woman quickly goes to the isolated house which Kai lives in and sees that the man she loves is injured from the fight. She tries to help Kai with his injuries, but the man thanks her and quickly tells her to go back to her father, as the woman cannot be seen with someone of such low rankings. At night, the Shogun arrives at the province of AKO for the festival that's about to take place. Kai watches from afar and notices Mizuki amongst the concubines of Lord Kira and recognizes the color of her eyes, being the same as the fox he saw earlier. He immediately goes to Oishi's resident and warns the samurai about the witch, who may endanger the lord's life, but the samurai ignores Kai's warnings just like before, as he doesn't respect the opinions of someone who was raised by the demons. The next day, Lord Kira arrives in the kingdom and greets Asano, complimenting about the beauty of the province, but their relationship quickly becomes strained when the man disrespects the lord by showing rude behaviors when he started flirting with Lady Mika. They sit together and begin watching the tournament as Kira brings out his champion for the fight. The huge man begins walking towards the stadium and towers over everyone, as the audience watch in amazement at the sheer size of the fighter. At the same time, Yasuno sees the witch in her animal form and falls victim to her magic. Kai rushes towards the samurai and realizes that the man can no longer compete. In order to save his lord from disgrace, the main character puts on the samurai armor and covers his face so that he may replace Yasuno in the tournament. After both fighters bow towards the lords, they draw out their swords and prepare for combat. The giant samurai begins attacking Kai with a furry of slashes and knocks the man backwards with incredible strength. They continue to fight and Kai manages to land multiple hits on the opponent, but eventually breaks the katana on the giant's armor and get knocked away from the ring, losing his helmet in the process and revealing his true identity. The shogun stops the fight and walks towards the ring, only to see that Kai is a half-bred who's clearly not a samurai. He immediately orders to kill the man. But Mika rushes in to protect her lover while Lord Asano begs the Shogun to spare the man's life. The ruler walks away in fury and the samurais from AKO are forced to strip away Kai's armor and begins beating him continuously for embarrassing their lord until the man falls unconscious. Realizing that Asano is mentally conflicted from the embarrassments, Mizuki conjures a spider using Kira's blood. She secretly goes to the old man's room at night and poisons him using the creature's venoms, causing the lord to hallucinate and see his daughter being defiled by Kira. 
The man charges into his rival's room and cuts him with a sword, waking up everyone as they try to stop Asano from killing the Lord. As a result of attacking the guest inside his own palace, the Shogun sentences Asano to die, but allows him to keep his honor by commiting seppuku, as the Lord's family watches in tears. After Asano's death, the Shogun announces that Mika would be married to Kira in order to mend the conflicts between the two houses, but only gives her one year to mourn for her father's death. The ruler also forbids Oishi and his men to take vengeance against Kira and tells them that they are now ronin without masters, leaving their fate in the hands of the Lord. Kira immediately banishes the samurais from the province of Akeo, and takes Kaiwe as a hostage and slave, while Mika watches in despair. He then imprisons Oishi and throws him into the cells, trying to break the man's will for revenge. One year later, Kira's men take the samurai out from the underground prison and throws him on the streets, while his wife and son take him into shelter immediately. He learns that everyone has left the province and that Kai was sold as a slave. Oishi promptly tells his son to prepare the horses and rides day and night until they reach the Dutch islands. He walks into the fighting arena and sees that Kai is fighting against a monstrous opponent who tries to kill the man with every blow. However, Kai quickly gains the advantage and slices the monster across the stomach, before decapitating the creature and winning the fight. Oishi tries to talk with Kai but gets attacked immediately as the main character blames him for the Asano's death. Their fight continues until Oishi mentions that Lady Mika is being held against her will, and the two begins fighting the slave masters, eventually escaping the area together after burning the place down. Oishi explains to Kai that Lady Mika will be forced to marry Kira in a week of time, and he plans to unite with all the Ronins in order to save the girl and avenge their master's death. They ride to a secret location where all his previous comrades have gathered and explains that he plans to assassinate their lord's murderer when Kira leaves the castle to gain blessings from his ancestors for the upcoming marriage. He tells one of the samurais to find out the exact date that Kira plans to leave in order to organize their assassination properly, while he goes with the rest of the men to gather available weapons. They arrive at the nearby town, only to find that it's heavily guarded by Kira's men, making it impossible to purchase any swords. At night, Kai tells Oishi that there's another way to get weapons for the samurais, but the mission requires them to venture into the Sea of Trees amongst the demons known as Tengus. With no other choice, the Ronins ride for the Tengu Forest and Kai brings them in front of a giant Buddha statue. He tells everyone to wait outside except for Oishi who accompanies him to meet the demons. They enter the cave and Kai tells the samurai that he mustn't draw his sword no matter what happens inside. The two sees numerous monks kneeling in front of the Buddha statue and the main character tells Oishi to wait for him here. Kai arrives inside a smaller cave where a blade is put in the center of the room, while another demon walks towards him welcoming his return. The creature questions why the main character is helping those men outside, when they treated him so poorly from before, but Kai replies that they are good men and that their goal is just. The demon continues to demoralize the man by stating that the world offers him nothing, and that he'll never be with Mika in this lifetime, but Kai accepts this with humility and vows to find her in the next life. Seeing the man's resolve, the demon tells him to take the sword if he can, and both of them flies towards the blade using their magic, but Kai manages to retrieve the katana before his master and wins the battle between the two. At the same time, Oishi turns around and sees that his men have entered the temple despite his orders, and Yasuno draws the sword after seeing the demons on the ground. The creatures began attacking the samurais and killing them one by one using their magic which makes them impossible to strike. Oishi sees this and is tempted to draw his sword but remembers what Kai has told him before and manages to restrain his actions until every one of the samurais are killed. It turns that everything was hallucinated by Oishi as part of the test that the Tengus have placed on him, and numerous katanas appear, indicating that he's won the battle of will. They leave the forest after taking their new weapons and arrive at the farmhouse where the Ronins are hiding out. Oishi is notified by one of his samurais who found out that Kira is leaving for the shrines tonight, which prompts him to gather all his men in order to assassinate the Lord. They slowly approach the area filled with hay and sees the silhouette of their target in front of a shrine, only guarded by two men. The person turns around, and the samurai is shocked to see that it's the witch, who attacks them with fire and burns the entire area, surrounding them in flames. The men are ambushed by numerous arrows and killed one by one. The giant golem appears as well and butchers the ronins as they run for their lives. The group goes back to the farmhouse in defeat, and Oishi questions hopelessly about what to do next while Kai tries to reassure his comrade that not all is lost and that they still have the weapons and the elements of surprise. The next morning, Kai sees a group of wedding performers heading towards Kira's castle and realizes the opportunity that's presented in front of them. They stop the performers and take their costumes, 
planning to disguise themselves in order to move closer to assassinating the Lord. At night, the samurais manage to avoid detection from Kira's guards and make it into the fortress without suspicion. Lord Kira takes Lady Mika and plans to finally have their wedding and gaining control of AKO in the process. They sit in front of the stage and begin enjoying the show as the samurais perform at crowd in order to distract the soldiers. The ronins take this opportunity to retrieve their weapons and invade the area, ambushing and killing off the guards without detection. Oishi continues to perform on stage as he moves closer to the Lord, taking the blade that was hidden and charges in for the kill, but his attack was prevented by an arrow from the guards, and the people run in fear as they become aware of the assassins. The ronins began attacking the soldiers as Kira runs away, taking Mika into the castle from the flying arrows. The giant golem charges towards the men but gets engulfed by the exploding trap that the samurais have placed which turns him into pieces. Kai begins chasing after Kira alongside Oishi as they cut down numerous incoming soldiers trying to stop the two men. Mika manages to escape her captor and runs the other way, while Kira abandons everything in order to save his own life. After disposing the guards, Oishi runs towards the lord while Kai goes to save the princess. Mika makes it outside the building and into the courtyard as she finally sees her lover, and they run towards each other as they finally embrace. Their reunion is cut short when a ghostly kimono flies in front of them through the air and lands on the ground, transforming into the witch, who plans to kill both of them. The woman walks closer towards the couple and begins transforming again, revealing her true form which resembles a massive dragon that levitates in the air. The creature attacks Kai furiously, but the man is able to defend himself and strike back, causing the monster to retreat temporarily. Kai tells Mika to hide behind the walls, while he prepares to battle the dragon to the death. At the same time, Oishi finds Kira inside the neighboring room and begins attacking the man through the walls. He enters the room and continues to hit at the enemy, knocking the man to the floor as Kira desperately tries to defend himself. Oishi tackles Kira and sent both of them crashing through the walls. He throws the Lord onto the floor and continues to kick the man with anger, eventually disabling him and grabs him from behind. Oishi takes the blade that his Lord used to commit suicide, and stabs Kira in the heart. He then cuts the man's head off in a single strike and brings it outside to his comrades, showing them that they have won the battle. The soldiers all surrender at the sight of Kira's death, and the Ronins look up at their leader, realizing that they've finally avenged their Lord's honor. Meanwhile, Kai continues to fight the dragon by striking its face, causing the monster to throw the concrete pillars at the man in frustration. The creature then summons a stream of flames towards Kai, as the warrior splits the elements with the blade, rendering the dragon's magic useless. Kai begins to attack the monster offensively by slashing it continuously, forcing the creature back to a corner. He tries to stab the dragon, but it grabs onto the man's katana and throws him in the air away from the sword. The monster then begins to target Mika as it roars furiously towards the woman, but Kai manages to use the Tengu's magic and takes the blade from floor while rushing towards the dragon. Kai jumps into the air and stabs the creature through the head, causing it to tumble to the floor and scream in pain. The monster then begins transforming back into Mizuki as the woman dies while taking her last breath. The Ronins walk out of the castle as the enemy soldier all kneel before them and lay down their weapons in submission. The samurais head back to AKO and they are finally able to honor their lord in front of his grave, by offering the dagger that killed Kira as tribute. The shogun is notified of Kira's death and sentences every one of the ronins to die. But he allows them to regain their honor by committing seppuku just like their lord, as they showed honor by avenging their master while following the way of Bushido. Mika watches in sadness as Kai and the other men prepare to go through the ritual, and cries knowing that she'll never see her lover anymore in this life. She stares on the bridge and looks into the distance, remembering Kai's promise to look for her in their next life together. The End Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.